women act as bad as you let them. What is it we do in the red pill? We swap notes. Now I'm sure people have heard all kinds of different stories about us, but I'm here to give you a glimpse inside the locker room. Here we're going to discuss the field reports that happened a few years back. Brand new guys who are trying to learn the strategies that we talk about. Who am I? I used to be one of these brand new guys. I, like you, was pretty good at women in relationships, but I wasn't great at it. Hard times hit, things got tough, and it turns out there's nowhere for a man to go nowadays that actually wants him to succeed, to thrive, to get better at what he does and improve his lot in life. So, like most guys, I took it upon myself, found a bunch of guys in the same boat as me, and together we built a set of working strategies based on the experience of hundreds of thousands of men, just like us. Men swapping notes, iron sharpening iron. Welcome to the locker room. Girl leaves the date crying. This is my second date with this girl who I know from my meditation group. When we first met, I tried to keep things a bit lighthearted and fun, but she was really uptight. She announced almost immediately that she had to leave at 8.30, which was about an hour, and basically we needed to hurry up and have dinner. So when we're ordering drinks and dinner, and the barmaid tells us how much it's going to be, she looks at me and says, Oh, do you want us to pay separate? To which I reply, Unless you're offering. She looks at me, stone cold, and says, No, I'm not offering to pay. And this, this pisses me off a bit because A, it was her idea to get food. I would have been happy with a beer and B, she's a doctor and she probably earns a fair bit more than me. So we sat down, started chatting, and it's like everything I said, she can either outdo with her own experience or she is just this much better now as a complete person. At one point, she tells me how she has a large number of friends and I stop and ask, are you a narcissist? Because by, by that point, I had become tired of her grandiose sense of self and what a complete person that she believed she was. Anyway, she starts tearing up after the narcissist comment, makes a big deal about how nobody has ever said that to her before, and then she left. All in all, it was a terrible date. Was it an awful thing, you ask? I didn't actually mean for it to be hurtful. I just kind of said what was on my mind. Let's define a couple terms here. Frame. I have this one a lot on these videos because it's expansive and there's a lot to it. In this case, whoever frames the interaction has the frame. Frame in this case is reality, when a reality doesn't interfere. Obviously, you're going to have the best frame in the world, and an earthquake really doesn't care. An earthquake's going to have the frame. Narcissism. In this case, narcissism isn't what you think of when you look up the medical term in the DSV-4. It's a very crude way of identifying it as a series of behaviors in somebody for the purposes of giving a diagnosis. But... When you apply the actual condition to the real world, it's similar to somebody who has their own life story to them. I don't mean life stories in their history. I mean life story as in the same thing as I used to describe frame. The difference is for a narcissist, that's all made up. The strong independent women thing, the alpha male leader of men thing. If you're talking about this stuff and you're not that kind of person who's in that position, well, then it's essentially narcissism. The problem is people have to engage on that frame. Otherwise, you experience what's called narcissistic injury. A narcissistic injury is when somebody goes against the narrative that you set as part of your frame. In the case of the above story, the girl's talking about herself being a strong, independent woman that doesn't need no man. And when the guy called her out as a narcissist, that essentially went against her narrative structure and just showed her to be delusional. At which point, 
There's only one reaction that the narcissist can have. Narcissistic rage. This is the only reaction of somebody when they receive a narcissistic injury. And it's different than anger. Anger is a bit of a social emotion. Anger is a mixture of pain and some kind of social grievance. Rage is different. Rage is just pure limbic brain and it manifests in similar ways to anger, but more extreme and less reasonable. If you think of a two-year-old having a temper tantrum on the floor, that would be a good analogy for rage. My advice to this guy is very simple. He needs to have frame. In this case, you can see he still believes in the equity of the sexes. You can tell that in his line about how the girl is a doctor and makes more, so she should want to pay her fair share. That's not really how dating works. Women like the idea of being wooed. They always do respond positively when guys offer uh, more sincere or invested signals. In this case, him buying dinner and drinks. It's a smaller one, but it's more invested. And so that's the kind of thing she's looking for. At the same time, she's looked at this a lot as if she's attracted to a certain type of man and therefore everybody must be attracted to that certain kind of person. And so she works her best to become what she sees as her ideal man, which is most likely why the guy referred to as a narcissist. Most men who are top tier men by most women's standards tend to have a very healthy level of narcissism. If narcissistic personality disorder is a 9 out of 10, healthy level of narcissism is a 7 or an 8. It's definitely not a 5. Back to the advice here. As soon as she said, we have one hour to eat and we need to hurry up and have this date, right there, his frame should have known he's not the main priority right now and he's wasting his time. If she came to me and said, I only have one hour so we need to hurry up and eat, I would just offer her a gift. Look, I don't want you to be late for your next appointment, so why don't you leave now? You can be 50 minutes early and I'll catch you later. And that's it. If you have options and you need to have options, if you have options and somebody frames the interaction in this way, it's showing that your dignity is not being taken into account. Now, I don't care who this is, how good the sex is, how great a doctor she is, at this point, my dignity means I should have a better option. And if not, it lets me know the work I'm going to do. An alternative situation. You go out on a date. First things first, once you run into one of these high masculine trait professions, lawyer's a big one, doctor's a big one, uh, corporate level, especially above the role of manager is another one you're gonna get some fairly masculine traits. Now you have two ways you can go about these. First one is you compete. Well, you don't compete, but you're essentially saying, I don't really care how great you are in the office or at your doctor or at your clinic or at your practice. When you're in front of me, you're gonna act like a woman and that's all there is to it. Now, she may try to fight you on it, or she may be one of those kind of girls that actually loves to be able to sit there and be in the comfortable arms of a man who's taking charge. At the same time, you have to be absolutely ruthless with your frame and what you're willing to put up with. She gets one chance at this. There is a lot of doctors, a lot of lawyers, a lot of corporate vanguards, a lot of those type of women out there who will completely screw things up because they have no game, they have no relationship qualities, they really have no quality at all other than they have a hole that's nice to have fun with every now and again. So the alternative to this strategy, and this is something that should happen months before you end up in this situation, is you should be seeing multiple girls. I'm not saying you should be sleeping with multiple girls, but you need to know that you have a few on speed dial that you could call, you can go out for a couple drinks with and have good fun with. And there has to be a sexual tension there. You can't just be besties who have drinks every Thursday while she complains about her boyfriend. And the funny part is once this becomes your reality or your frame, 
you're going to notice through the way your body language projects itself, the way you talk about things, the way you frame your discussions, that people are going to start acting right. And the ones that don't, they're going to make it about two minutes into this date, and you're not going to have this whole entire story here. On that note, thanks guys for listening. I did a single guy one. There's been a lot of requests for guys to do some single field reports, so I'm going to start adding those to the rotation too. And on that note, I'll catch you guys later. Cheers. <laughs>